Hello, I'm Robert Payton, and welcome to Revelations of Grace and Mercy. Thank you for joining me on my channel, and today we're going to discuss the resurrection of hell. Yes, there are three verses down here that back up the resurrection of hell. And you're going, well, I've never heard that before. Sunday school didn't teach me that. Well, that's because they didn't teach you that. So, <laughs> um, first we got to discuss the four resurrections because everyone argues about the post-trib, mid-trib, pre-trib arguments. The problem with all three of those is there's no tribulation, no seven-year tribulation coming. And that's in other teachings of mine. And it's the biggest lie from Satan that has been infiltrated into our church from these higher-ups and handed over to the rest of the church who did not put it under trial. They just took these scriptures and, oh yes, that's the way it is. And they don't even understand it. They teach it, they preach it, but they don't understand it. I could fumble them all up just by talking to them for a few minutes. And they can't answer the questions, which means they get mad and they throw me out of their office. <clears throat> so, let's talk about the four resurrections real, real quick so we can go into which one of these resurrections is the one where both those in heaven and hell are resurrected. Out of the four resurrections, I have other videos that support this. The best one on my channel about the four resurrections is the rapture truth, the third resurrection. It's the most complex. In it, we have, uh, everyone knows from the Old New Testament scriptures, the first resurrected is Jesus. This comes from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 23 and 24, which, of course, is mistranslated a little bit in our King James Bible. It's there, but they don't put the commas in there. So they blend in these resurrections here almost all into one so and it confuses everyone so but in it it says that Jesus the Messiah is our first fruits then those raised along with Jesus that is the second resurrected is in Matthew chapter 27 verses 50 through 53 and this is the guy we see in all the movies who's watching Jesus and he says surely he was the son of God. He, he didn't come to that conclusion by just staring up at him at the cross and seeing a, a little rainstorm and it get dark from an eclipse. If you read it, Matthew chapter 27, verses 50 through 53, you find out that those there are people, many holy people, raised from the dead. They were raised from the dead. And they were like, and, and this, this, this guy who they put in the movies was shocked as well. And he saw all this stuff, and he came to the conclusion that surely Jesus was the Son of God because he saw these people raised right after Jesus. Their bodies come up out of the, out of the grave, all skeleton, and then flesh, and just like in Ezekiel, the flesh and the bones, everything come come together, and the blood and the skin, and uh, it could have probably been a horrific sight. And then all of a sudden, the soul was united with their body, and they came back to life. And it was after Jesus arose, it was after he arose that same day, they rose up behind him. And they went to the Jerusalem. They went to the city, Holy Jerusalem. And there they probably mingled and talked to everybody, and everybody believed that Jesus was the Messiah. But then Satan went to work, and uh, then there was an apostasy years, years later where everyone just kind of turned their back on, on what was said and what was witnessed. And that's the apostasy in the Bible. It's not in our future. It was back back, back then. The third, from 1 Corinthians 15, 23, Jesus, the Messiah was a first fruits, then those raised along with him, comma, at the time of his coming, and then you got verse 24, and then the culmination, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father. Now let's jump to the four real quick. This is the culmination. This is at the seventh, the final trumpet, 1 Corinthians 15, 53, 57. 1 Corinthians 15 is all about the good news, about God, you know, us getting resurrected. And it's covered briefly here in this, these two verses. And then it expands, and it talks about the third in 1 Corinthians uh, 15, 23. And then it, it talks about... I may have put that up there wrong. And it talks about the ones at the final final trumpet. I think this verse is supposed to be up here. But anyway, not going to get into that. This is where the uh, your mortal bodies is changed to immortality. 
This is after the thousand year reign of Christ. This is at the very end at the seventh shofar. The seven shofars have not taken place yet. None of a, none of the shofars have taken place yet. So, verse 24 is the fourth is the culmination. That's after Jesus' millennial reign. See, he's coming to set up his millennial reign at the time of his coming. To begin preparations for his millennial reign and then institute his millennial reign. And then a thousand years later, he releases Satan to change to, you know, deceive people, and a lot of them, one-third of mankind. That's not mankind on the earth right then. That's one-third of mankind from the beginning since man was created. That is a lot of people. That is the uncountable amount, like sands on the seashore. You can't count them. You won't be able to count them that come against Jerusalem at the Battle of Armageddon. And that's when we go to, you know, God sends us all, sends Jesus. We're all riding with him on horses. We go to war, the battle, and defeat the enemy. Let's back back up to at the time of his coming. All right. This is the third resurrection. This is the upcoming resurrection. This is the next one up. Okay. And it's before God's fury. Okay. We got uh, Colossians. Uh, you know, uh, he's going to deliver us. Uh, I think it's chapter one. He's going to deliver us. Uh, also in, um, uh, just looking at him, in uh, what he told one of the seven churches when he was writing to them, he said, I'll keep you from that day of vengeance. God's fury. Okay, God's fury is not for his people. See, you have been taught to believe that God's fury is for us. That God's going to do anything he wants and he don't really care about you and he's going to let you burn with everybody else. Okay, that's a lie from Satan. Okay, as one pastor put, God is good. There's no other way around it. You know not the plans he has for you to prosper you. Okay, but you just, you don't follow him. And if you're sitting in church every day listening to a preacher tell you how you're going to go through a seven-year tribulation and all this garbage, I know we have tribulations today, but it's not God's fury it's man's fury. Man is doing this to man on earth today. What has been done to you, God didn't do to you. Man did the evil. God did not do it. Man did it. God is not to blame. Man is. You go, well, didn't Jesus die on the cross for all of us? Yes. But you're in the age of the Gentiles, these 2,000 years since Jerusalem was destroyed which are in around 2067 A.D. You're in the age of the Gentiles. You're in the last days, 2,000 years. You're in the end times, plural, 2,000 years, where we are supposed to take our power and authority that Christ's given us and go to work. And we have not been doing it. The church is slacking. The church is taking orders from the Luciferians and don't even know it. And they're teaching all this lies and garbage. And if if you don't read the Bible for yourself, you're 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 gonna fall with them. Okay. So uh, time is coming. It's First Corinthians fifteen twenty three. Um, that's up here. At time is coming. Revelation twenty. That tells us that uh, it's before the millennial reign of Christ. Those that raised prior. It says. That, uh, first resurrected, but that's a mistranslation. That's in other videos. Uh, uh, the Rapture Truth, the Third Resurrection. Check that video out. A lot of mistranslated words, especially when it comes to our resurrections. Revelation chapter 20, I think it's verse 5, 4 or 5. Uh, those are the prior re resurrection, prior to the millennial reign, and that's why it says prior, is, is because there's another one after the millennial reign. According to Revelation, I mean, 1 Corinthians 15, 23 and 24. Okay, Revelation chapter 7. This is the third resurrection. All of Revelation chapter 7 is about the third resurrection, including uh, the four angels that are coming to harm the land or see your tree. That is another mistranslated word, harm or hurt. They're not coming to hurt anything. That is That translates to judge. Okay, They're coming to judge, and they're going to come down, and they're going to judge whether you are worthy or unworthy to be in God's kingdom. And that is is a, a, a pre-whatever 
prerequisite to being taken up to meet the Lord. First Thessalonians 4, to meet the Lord in the air, in the clouds, and thus we will always be with him. Okay, now we got three more verses. This is the resurrection of hell. Why is God going to resurrect those from hell? Well, Jesus didn't come down to save, you know, Johnny Bravo, who goes to church every day and reads his Bible every day, and he's a good guy. And yes, Jesus did come for him too, but he came so that all can come to, to the Father. He came for the dirty, rotten pig. He came for the child molesters. He came for the child killers. He came for everybody. Okay? But if you were doing this and you come to know God and you go back to that, you know, you're, you're, you're mocking God. You know? So, God judges you. And that's what these, when you'll be judged at the time of His coming. And we'll look for His coming 2,000 years after destruction of Jerusalem and the temple, as, you know, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. Uh, explains and you know that's around 2067 I would start looking for the return of Christ I don't care what's happening in the world today Christ I don't believe Christ is coming yet he's not gonna come early uh, he talks about he may he may come late he never said anything about coming early but who knows you know he might decide to come early you know I'm not I'm not I'm not God all right so Acts 24 15 and uh, this is uh, Paul, who lives after the first and second resurrection. Okay. He may have been there and saw what happened here. Maybe he didn't. Maybe he was in another country. So, but he says in verse 15, And I continue to have hope in God, which they too accept, that there will be a resurrection of both. This is a resurrection of both. The righteous and the unrighteous. Acts 24, 15. Read it. Read it and understand it. A resurrection of both the righteous and the unrighteous. Okay? At the time of Christ's coming. It's the only one that fits because uh, death has already been done away with over at the culmination. And you can't have a resurrection from the dead. That's first, uh, first Corinthians uh, 15, 26. You can't have a resurrection. Basically, you can't have a resurrection from the dead if death does not exist anymore, if it was defeated, completely defeated. So there's no way to be resurrected from the dead. So the only viable uh, resurrection is his third resurrection at the time of Christ's coming, where both the righteous and the unrighteous, the righteous will come from heaven because you know, to be absent from the body, be present from the Lord. That's a little saying. I'm not sure whether that's in the Bible, but in a nutshell, from John chapter 5, uh, Jesus is telling us in John chapter 5 that John recorded that we don't experience death if we live in Christ. And I, I've got a firsthand experience of that. I've uh, I had my little trip of uh, almost dead and got to see a little bit of heaven and, you know, wish I could remember anything that we talked about okay a lot of people die and they see hell just because that's where they're heading and if something didn't happen to bring them back well they'd probably still be there but when Christ returns have some hope in those loved ones or whatever that you know went to hell they're gonna get a second chance they're not gonna burn in hell for eternity that is a misconception and I'd like to know where they get that from because they're just taking the end, the very end scripture, and they're saying that without studying the rest. All right, let's go to John chapter 5. Now, this is Jesus talking, John chapter 5, okay? This is Jesus, the Messiah, who is speaking. This is before he died and rose in, from the grave, okay? But he still knows a lot, you know, he is God. And uh, I'm just going to start with... Uh, 27, also he, that's God the Father, has given him, that's Jesus, authority to execute judgment because he, that's Jesus, is the Son of Man. Now, Jesus is talking to the bad guys, okay, that don't believe anything. Okay, verse 28, don't be surprised at this because the time is coming 
when all who are in the grave. Who? Who? All who are in the grave. Not some, not half, not a few, not many, but they didn't come, they were they were in uh, see the difference between this and this is uh, this was paradise. Before Christ died on the cross, people died and went to paradise. When Christ rose from the grave, many holy people from paradise, all of them from paradise, come up out of the grave. Many of them did. And I guess the rest of them he took to heaven. But uh, these were resurrected. And you find that incredible, but there's two evidences. One's in Peter and one's somewhere else where uh, he's talking. He's talking to those people. You know, those of you who have died, you know, you're supposed to live, understand that you're living by grace now, not the law. So anyway, I'm uh, getting off track. Um, yeah, we went way off track. So let's go back. All who are in the grave. And that's all who are in the dirt. Now this dirt, this area of dirt was cleaned up. Paradise. It was cleaned out when Christ died at the cross. Okay. And I've heard, I don't know where the scripture is, the hell's crossed over into that area because it's gotten so big. Okay. Hell's taken over that area too because there's a lot of people going to hell. So hell's still, you know, just getting bigger and bigger all the time. And so the grave is all of hell now for this resurrection. So all who are in the grave. So that means as we continue, because the time is coming when all who are in the grave will hear his voice, verse 29, and come out those who have done good to a resurrection of life, those who have done evil, to a resurrection of judgment. Now, this doesn't say eternal fire. This is judgment, a resurrection of judgment. What did I talk about? Um, uh, where is it? Revelation chapter 7, where it says to harm, to hurt. It means to judge. These people are resurrected. There's a judgment. It's a judgment. Okay, the angels are coming down to get those, and they're going to judge. You're going to be judged whether you're worthy or unworthy to go up to meet the Lord in the air and to rule and reign with him for the 1,000, for his millennial reign from the holy city, New Jerusalem, which is coming at this time and not at the end because, again, that's another bad teaching. But um, they're going to be resurrected. Or it'll be resurrection of judgment from hell. Which means they're not going to go, get to go up to heaven. They're going to be left on earth to be ruled and reigned over. Okay? Christ's kingdom. When Christ comes, his kingdom's going to rule and reign over the unworthy. And all those people. There's scriptures in the Old Testament. Well, he tells Israel, you will rule over your enemies. Well, it never happened. They've never ruled over their enemies, but they will when Christ returns. Okay? So, that's the second verse that backs up the resurrection of hell. Okay? Acts 24, 15 was the first. Uh, second one, John chapter 5. Actually, they're in any order. Now, let's go to Daniel 12. This one I left for the last. I should have said it first, but I left it for the last because it's a little more complex. Now, what happened in Daniel chapter 11 is we see the seven heads of the dragon, the seven kings. And the last one, the seventh one, it, it goes into his destruction. That God destroys him. But then it starts talking about Satan. And that's that's where Daniel has quite a bit of mistranslation in it. I've I've seen like whole sections where, where it sounds confusing. Whenever Daniel starts getting confusing, you don't know what's going on, it's mistranslated. And it was done deliberately by these Luciferians that have been, you know, interfering in everything. And they probably go all the way back to the Sadducees. But they interfere with everything in the scriptures. And they've mistranslated a lot of things just, just to keep you confused and not believing and keep us fighting each other. You know, just all kinds of stuff. 
So anyway, so he's talking about Satan, and then Satan, you know, uh, finally uh, Satan pitches the tents of his palace between the seas. It's not, isn't the you know Atlantic and Pacific? It's the seas in the Middle East, and the mountain of the holy Go of the holy glory, and and Satan will come to his end with no one to help him. This is when Christ comes for the millennial reign. Okay, and he locks Satan up. Revelation chapter twenty. He's going to lock him up. Okay, and he's not going to have anybody to help him. It's going to be end of his religion, the end of the second beast religion. Okay, from Revelation thirteen one on, and it's going to be end of there. That that's a, a religion. The beast is a religion in the Middle East because it's this Middle East book, and it's the dominant religion of the Middle East today, and we all know what that is. And like I said, it's a Middle East book. It doesn't cover all the satanic religions and everything throughout the world. We're talking about just the Middle East, so keep stay focused. So, Daniel 12, 1 and 2. Satan's going to come to his end, okay? Verse 1. When that time comes, when Satan comes to his end, Michael, the great prince, who champions your people, will stand up. And there will be a time of distress unparalleled between the time they became a nation. Who is they? It's not Israel they're talking about. They is Satan's nation, where he is dwelling at that time. And I can tell you right now, it's called the Whore of Babylon, which means a nation within the middle of Babylon, old Babylon, which is now the Middle East. So a nation in the Middle East. So he'll be dwelling in a nation in the Middle East when he comes to an end between the seas. And uh, the Whore of Babylon is defi defined in the Old Testament. Look it up. Do some reading. I would start in it, uh, Isaiah <laughs> in uh, Jeremiah chapters 50 and 51. All right. Uh, I'm parallel between the time they became a nation and that moment. So something really bad is about to happen to that nation, which is going to be the seven, the first four trumpet bowls, the first four plagues. Okay. At that time, your people will be delivered. He's, the angel is telling Daniel, your people is going to be delivered. Okay. Everyone whose name is found written in the book. Okay, so everyone who's found whose name is right, is is written in the book, are go, of course going to be re resurrected to everlasting life. Okay, but it goes on and it says many of those sleeping in the dust of the earth are God's people sleeping in the dust of the earth. John chapter five. No, when we die, we are taken up to heaven. We don't sleep in the dust of the earth. Okay, those sleeping in dust of the earth are those in hell. Okay, but it says many of those sleeping in the dust of the earth will awaken. Now our bodies are also in the dust of the earth as well, so it's a cross reference. But you know your soul goes straight to heaven, and those that don't know God go straight to hell. Okay, so uh, dust of the earth will awaken some to everlasting life, resurrection of everlasting life. And some to everlasting, again, not eternal fire, shame and abhorrence. Everlasting shame and abhorrence. Not eternal fire. Uh, let's go to verse 3. But those who can discern will shine like the brightness of heaven's dome. And those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. If you're trying to turn people to righteousness, you're going to shine even more than those who make it by the skin of the teeth. Now, one more quick thing about this everlasting fire. Everlasting fire occurs. The fire comes, I believe, from the destruction of the whore Babylon, and it's turned into a lake of fire. And everyone, at the end of the Battle of Armageddon, over a thousand years, the Battle of Armageddon is over a thousand years, at this culmination time, at the final trumpet, it's after the final trumpet, there's a battle at the Battle of Armageddon, Armageddon, and it is a physical thing. There's some people, oh, it's spiritual. No, it's a physical battle that's coming. And it's only those who, who lose in that battle, who are taken captive by the Lord, they are thrown into eternal fire. There are those that are not going to participate in that war. They're still going to be on the earth. But they're going to be under shame and abhorrence. 
Okay. So the thing is, don't play with God. Don't go, oh, I'll get a second chance. I can tell you right now, just from dying slowly in the hospital, the amount of pain, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. I mean, there's people that deserve it. And I can't even imagine what hell is like. I've heard stories. There's stories out there about what hell is like. It's the biggest nightmare you can come across. You don't want to go there. You don't want to be there. You can, you can, you can just stop what you're doing right now. Ask the Lord to forgive you. He's right there. He's everywhere. And tell him to save you. I don't care what you are right now. I don't care who you are right now. Ask the Lord to save you. Let Him clean up the work. Let Him clean up, clean you up. Read your Bible. Do God's will. Not your will. Let His will be done. This has been a teaching on the resurrection of hell. Something that has never been taught in our churches. That after my first book, seven years of studying the first book, I set those these three verses aside because I, I didn't understand. I just didn't understand. But the more God revealed to me his grace and mercy, it fell into place. And I was like, that is what that means. I mean, it's so clear, you know, a resurrection of the righteous and the unrighteous, a resurrection to life and a resurrection of judgment. All who are in the grave, a resurrection of eternal everlasting life and a resurrection of everlasting shame and abhorrence because those that are taken uh, verse 20 revelation 20 those who are resurrected the second death has no power that second death where you burn for eternal if you if you make it to here you've made it if you've taken up here you've made it because you're going to be resurrected to your physical body you're going to be healed of everything. You're going to be like young again, but you're not going to be immortal. You're not going to, that doesn't come till a thousand, after the thousand year reign. So, study up, read up. I would suggest uh, if you're interested in about the resurrections, um, the rapture truth, the third resurrection is the one you want, the video you want. The four resurrections is me jabbering. So, uh, just jump in. Jump into some of my videos, take a look. You're gonna be shocked. Your preacher's gonna tell you I'm crazy, and I'm, and I've been called every name in the book. So I don't care. I'm just trying to get the truth to you all. Y'all have a great day and enjoy everything. And remember, uh, America's not in the end times right now. I mean, we're in the end times, the last days, but that's two thousand years. You got to get up and stand up and fight if you want to live. So, um, but it's not. Christ is not coming yet. Y'all have a great day, and I'll see you next time.